Caddis Maximus here again, this time with a review and comparison of non-insulated terminal crimpers as well as some other specialty crimpers and crimping pliers. This kind of orb will pretty much finish up all my reviews and comparisons of crimpers. And that way you, uh, I've got up there uh, just this huge variety of crimpers so people can go through and see that it's wow, they're a real kind of specialty tool. And you can have a whole tool collection that involves just crimping tools. It's really surprising the huge variety that's out there. Now these are the less common style with being the non-insulated style terminal as well as round terminal uh, crimpers. And we'll just start off with those. How you really know, and these are a pretty large set. We'll use these Packards over here, which I believe are them and Amphenol, or I'm not exactly sure how they're related, but they're effectively the same style of tools. I think at one point one of them bought the other out or their patents went out. But how you can tell uninsulated terminal crimpers is via the inside here. You can see, actually, if we look on the other side here, the jaws that crimp on the wire have these, like half of a figure eight, two little lumps. And those are the real distinctive feature. If we look at these over here, it's the same thing. There we go. Now you can probably see them a little better there. But the jaws have these little, kind of two little half rounded cutouts. On this set, they're actually on both sides. And they actually normally are on both sides, although some styles, such as these, uh, are round. And some actually have the half moon. What that does, and if I get a couple of connectors here, is uninsulated terminals are this style versus the style that most people commonly see, which would be these, which are known as partially insulated terminals. These are the common ones or more fully insulated terminals like these. But the difference is, is that you crimp over the plastic on these. And on these terminals, you uh, have to have a separate insulation. So either, you know, they're going on internal assemblies for circuit boards and equipment where you don't need the insulation, or they're going into a plastic connector. So you're doing the terminal and then it's gonna be inserted into something, or you'll do shrink tube or something else. Many times, you'll have to purchase something like this, which is a separate little silicone boot that would slide over the terminal once you installed it. But how these crimpers work is versus just squashing the whole wire, they take the two little metal tabs. And when these terminals come, the tabs are push, pointed straight out, as well as a little wire gripper. And that's the other thing that kind of sets these apart is that part of the terminal uh, actually grips onto the wire insulation itself and provides a real strong hold as well as a strain relief and they are a more reliable connection. The second thing about them is the way that, the way that they curl in both sides of the terminal provides a super strong, super reliable grip and crimp. They're very, very, these are the style that are used in all kind of produ production and machine crimpers or high speed crimpers that are used uh, in factories. Uh, usually do this style of crimp and they just just they are used because of that reliability because both do you get a really nice crimp every time on the wire but the way it grips the insulation also helps now the ones that have the kind of two cutouts on the back will do this well they also will pinch in to the insulation and then there's styles like the round ones which won't cause it to quite pinch in so much where they'll just curve it around and there's a theory to why you'd use both styles of connectors. Now, with these crimpers, like other wire terminals, uh, they have different die sizes for certain sizes of wire. And you have to be pretty careful with what die sizes that you use. What I mean is you have to be very careful to select just the right connector for the size of wire. And they tend to be real narrow range, such as 14 or 16 gauge or 18 or 20 gauge. And many times they're one specific size, such as some of these sets over here, like these or these Amphenols, which were really just 18 gauge only. And the reason is, is when you're crimping wire, it's difficult to actually have one set of dies or jaws that provide a good crimp on a variety of wire sizes. You have to have a compromise, and so if you use the maximum size wire, it tends to be over squished and actually narrowed down a little bit. And or when you're using the, the smallest of its range, it may not crimp quite fully, and you'll be subject to more kind of corrosion issues or even pull out and just not generally having a good connection.
and so it's pretty important. There's two different styles. I have one style here, and the way these crimpers work is if you have blade terminals, for instance, this is a little holder which keeps it nice and centered, so you put in the wire into the terminal, and then you put it into the, the ratchet, and this provides a stop, so it's held at just the right distance, and it keeps it all nice and centered, and then you go ahead and ratchet. And it's a nice feature of these professional grade ratchets is they have little stops and guides. When you're using, excuse me, when you're using this style terminal here, that's what this set of pliers is. And so even though they look the same, one's actually for doing flat blades and one's for doing the receptacles. And this is similar where you put in the receptacle except for it has a spring-loaded lever. So you'd put it in and it has a, just a little dot where it'll hold it in just the right position. There we go, I got this positioned up. So it has a little dot and it just, or a little bump in that metal blade and it holds it in just the right position. These aren't the crimp crimpers that crimp this terminal, but you can see that it's pretty much a universal standard. And these fit just like any others. And so it's a real nice feature because it keeps everything nice and centered when you're doing your crimp so it further ensures that you don't have any misalignment or any kind of problems with your crimping. There are different styles such as these which or operate horizontally and then there are these genuine ants here which actually operate uh, linearly or in a parallel to the frame fashion and these have kind of a smaller head they're always interesting because they have the head is very heavy duty on these crimpers these are really designed to last many many years but as we can see here this has one set for 18 only where on here they try to do both 18 and 20 so these would give you a slightly better crimp and then they have a 22 and a 20 gauge so when you start getting real small and it can be uh, less of a difference between the wire sizes and you can still get reliable crimps but as you get larger uh, crimps it really does start to become important to use just the right size terminal and wire and these crimpers are interesting because the little bump or hook to catch the terminal is actually a little blade that's in be a spring-loaded blade in between the two sets of dies so it's kind of interesting but you always know these non-insulated terminal crimpers because you see some odd crimpers and then you see the two little half moon cutouts. I call them half moon, half round cutouts. And you would realize, oh, those are non-insulated terminals and they're actually kind of nice to use. You get really reliable crimps out of them. So those are just some different styles. Here's one that's made just for 20 or 18 gauge and it's just in a more compact style unit. And in this situation, they do another amp thing where the connector alignment plates actually in between the dies and as you crimp it kind of holds it in place as you finish and the purpose to have a one die crimper is obviously you have something that's smaller and lighter weight and easier to use uh, it's not so uh, it's nice to have the multi die ones because that gives you a variety of sizes to work on but it makes for a bigger tool where on the single size ones it's kind of nice because they're more compact so if you're doing a lot of crimping usually it's one specific wire size so you'd have this if you're doing more service and repair then you'll have crimpers like these where you can work on a, diff a variety of different wire sizes we have some really compact more modern style with the adjustable cam and these are also at a 45 degree but these are the very same style these are Indeed, 18 gauge on insulated terminal crimpers because you just have that distinctive die. It's once you kind of get used to those dies and you want to know what these tools are. And after a few years, it took me probably three or four years, uh, you're able to build up a collection and I have a full array of non-insulated wire terminal crimpers. And then that's when these tools really kind of come into their own because then you have to worry about buying some cheap terminals and... Uh, being able to make uh, very professional grade crimps and so these are the same thing these have a little spring loaded just a window to hold the terminal in place but what's nice is they'll work on a more compact uh, area so if you're actually doing service work and doing non-insulated terminals then these are more what you would have versus these or these just because of their more compact size and what's interesting about these is they really got these dies held in there well. They use screws to hold them in, and then they use sp two spiral roll pins. So they actually have uh, three bolts, essentially. Not bolts, but uh, three secure fastenings on each side of the jaw. It's kind of interesting that they did that. And then this last set of amps here is uh, a, what you would call round terminals, so kind of like Molex. or These aren't the standard kind of round. These would be round terminals that are put inside 
you know, wiring harnesses and that type of thing. And you can see that it's just a uh, spherical die with two different size, sizes. So one's to smush the part that holds the wire and one's to smush the strain relief. And these are less common. It's actually pretty rare to work on spherical terminals like on, you know, computer power connectors, old computer power connectors. And so these I actually have never used and probably won't use much, but since, you know, I like to collect tools, it's always kind of nice. And these have a unique kind of system where they have a both an insertion tool for terminals as well as the crimper. Uh, these may also be for very fine coaxial cable. I'm still not exactly sure. When I looked them up, um, I was able to find these, but not with this set of dies. But what's interesting about these dies is they have this pin and then they pivot on these bolts. So as you crimp, you can see how the dies rotate to maintain alignment with that pin. And I always thought that was kind of neat about these because they are a compound ratcheting adjustable plier that also has uh, pivoting dies in it. So definitely a pretty neat tool. Anyway, moving on here, we have this, which is a pair of... Uh, Let's see, these aren't sergeants, these are shoals. But these, and sometimes you see them, I didn't have any idea what they really were until somebody told me, but these are just for installing uh, the brass buttons like on clothing. Uh, they just have an integrated hole punch as well as a uh, button press. And I thought, oh, those are going to be handy someday. I'll put some buttons on something. And so when somebody told me what they were, I was actually pretty happy about it because it has both the hole maker and the little button crimper. We have uh, some hog ring pliers here. And these hog ring pliers just smush these little copper uh, brackets. and They're not brackets, but they're just like little you know rings, although they're triangles. They come in an open kind of C shape. And then these pliers are actually spring-loaded in the closed position. So you'd have these, and they'd be in their open C shape, and they would hold the, the ring. And then these are great if you need to repair fencing or really anytime you want some kind of a ring that you could that's made out of steel copper plated for some corrosion resistance um, but anytime you just want to connect some things together hog rings really are pretty handy like that sometimes when i wanted to link two tarps together i would use hog rings to uh tie the eyelets of the two tarps to each other they come in different sizes uh, this is a real classic style of hog ring plier that you'd see these are a decker's hold them um, and they have little cutouts here. These are just cast, they probably are cast steel, not cast iron, but these are just basic hog ring pliers. They're not so irrelevant because actually Harbor Freight still sells some. Now these are Indian made, so they're not uh, particularly good quality, but surprisingly enough, compared to the Deckers Hold'em, they are better because they have a hot rivet, which is better. We can see that they're actually forged. So these are forged steel hog ring pliers. And I thought they were pretty nice, but they won't even work with this side, uh, the number three. These only work with really much smaller hog rings, and that's part of why I got them. You can see that they just have a, a machine cut out. They didn't have a provision to do hog rings sideways, but you can easily use a file and file out the jaws to make a cross slot. But I thought they would be in handy when I want any occasions when I want to use much smaller hog rings. It's actually kind of hard to find hog ring pliers that will crimp the small ones. Most of them are like this, so you can crimp those standard number threes. And the very last thing is these couple of uh, crimpers that are, I would say, plunge die crimpers. Um, these are used in various terminals. These can be used on standard wire terminals if you have the ones in the right size, but they're a little bit funky. And how these crimpers work is they actually have uh, a cam mechanism in here. And then they have these four little pins that protrude out and perform the crimping when you squeeze them together. I have another set that's similar right here. These are uh, a Daniels. And these are for putting on connectors on uh, precision electronic uh, terminals on specialty wire. This would be used in... Uh, the type of terminals you normally crimp with these would be used in medical equipment or laboratory grade electronics equipment. They're rarely used in any kind of consumer situation. Most people have never even really seen something that's been crimped with one of these. I know that it's only been a couple times that I ever saw crimps like these and the last time was inside a Tektronix oscilloscope. But these are just a ratcheting version. The Buchanan's are just a little bit of a more budget version. But these are definitely still pretty nice. They have a central little die, which looks like this. 
it's just an alignment. So these are set up to take just very specific wire sizes. This is for very fine wire, 28, 30, and 32 gauge. And then uh, how they get around the issue, I've talked about uh, over crimping and under crimping. So the big deal with these Daniels is that these little die sets here, these, whole, these just keep the terminal centered, is if you're crimping a 28 or 30 or 32 gauge wire, that you would select a particular number, and that's what this wheel is. This is an adjustable cam crimper. It's the same kind of mechanism that's right here, but instead it's set up on a dial, and what it does is determine how far the little teeth push in. So if I'm crimping number 32 gauge wire, which is really thin, I'd put this on number two. It would adjust the cam inside here, or a cam type mechanism, and the teeth would protrude just a little bit further to make sure I got a good crimp on 32 gauge wire. Where if I was crimping 28 gauge wire, I'd pull this little lock pin out and move it to position four. And then it would exactly and properly uh, crimp for 28 gauge wire. And so when you come to scientific and you know high frequency radio equipment and uh, medical equipment, it really starts to become real important that every crimp is exactly right for the exact wire size. And this is a good kind of system to have a crimper that will do multiple wire sizes, but be customizable or will be perfect for whatever gauge you're putting in here. And the tool has a bit of range. You can see this die set goes down to 28, yet we have eight positions on here. So the next die set would be 26, 24, and 22 gauge. But these are nice, they're a combination of both steel and aluminum, and they have quite a few parts. Um, what's interesting is these are kind of expensive, and many times uh, uh, people who are using these in a production sense or even in service and repair kind of get tired of having to manually operate crimpers, or if you have stainless steel terminals, which are tough to crimp. Uh, it's funny is they have this little sticker on here. Let me zoom in. It says this hand tool own capitals must not be used in any powered press. And then they give you like some OSHA thing. But they're saying the hand tool, uh, you should not use power tools to operate hand tools. Imagine that. But I thought it was just a little bit hilarious that they have that sticker on there because that sticker was born because uh, somebody had an issue with that at some point. And to finish up the last of this, for this Daniels tool, I surprisingly enough do have some terminals. Uh, because when I found it, it had a couple little jars What were some very odd, very fine wire terminals. And we have some very tiny ones and some larger ones. So this size is actually the socket and it has a little extra little metal collar uh, to provide spring tension. So this is where the little plug goes and you have a pin. And I'm going to have to zoom in here and then... See if the camera, oh, it will. You can see there's a little hole, so you can put it in the wire and solder it. The little holes to let the air bubble escape, so the solder will go all the way through the terminal. And then you can crimp it in this Daniels tool. Uh, or you can just crimp them alone, but most times you'd solder and then crimp on top of soldering. And you can see the other end here. And these are the type of terminals that you might use 30 or 32 gauge wire. And these would actually be like 28 gauge. This would be a 32 gauge. And these things are just tiny. You could just count, you know, maybe 20 average human hairs might fit in the end of that. So these are just tiny little crimpers, or excuse me, tiny little terminals that you may use with something like that. So that should finish up this review and comparison. I really appreciate everybody watching. And uh, I will move on to some more tools in the future. I don't even think I've done uh, quite a few categories, actually. And I uh, look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Um, please subscribe. Caddis Maximus out. Oh my goodness, quick addendum here. The last thing I actually meant to talk about were these Nipex pliers. These are some Nipex uh, Otaker clamp pliers. I believe these are model 1099s. That way if somebody comments that I forgot to talk about these, I'll just respond tell them to uh, watch the very end of the video. Uh, what Oderker clamps are, is there a type of hose clamp that is, is really one of the best because you have like heavy duty truck hose clamps like T-bolt hose clamps. You have other hose clamps like these, the worm drive ones, 
Uh, or you have the spring clips. And the reason the auto manufacturers use all these spring clip clamps is as the engines and stuff heat up and cool down, uh, if you have like a worm clamp, it can expand, it cannot, excuse me, expand or contract. So the hose, as the parts heat up, the hose gets squashed some. And as they cool down, it loosens up and it ends up uh, working the hose, constantly squishing it and then releasing it. And then it starts losing pressure and wants to leak. The nice thing about the spring clamps is they're always holding with uh, an even amount of pressure, hot or cold. And then secondly, when they heat up the spring, it can expand a little bit. An Oedeker clamp is about the best style or best uh, solution to getting both the really nice secure holding of a worm driver, even a, even a T-bolt hose clamp, while still maintaining some of the spring properties for a really good long-term longevity. The most common style or where people will know these from is the clamps that hold on the boots on axles of front wheel drive cars known as CV boots. Those weird little clamps on those boots, the piece of sheet metal that has a few teeth and it goes over the top and then has this little area that's pinched in, these are the darn pliers that do that. There's different styles of pliers but these are um, uh, probably the best ones that I've seen in a standard plier style. The Nipexes really are a good high quality tool, very good forging. Um, but these are a universal style, so you can crimp both on the end. Many of these are just designed for crimping on the end or crimping on the side. These are a combination where you can either crimp on the end or you can crimp on the side. And that's what this hole is for. So when you're crimping, the little part that's bulging will actually sit in this cutout area as you're crimping using the side. Obviously, when you're using the side, it kind of pinches the back a little more in the front. So you kind of have to crimp and then go and crimp a little bit more on the back edge if you want to be perfect about it. But I really couldn't figure out what these pliers were for because they were a system and then it was, and I don't know if I'm saying uh, Oetiker right, O-E-T-I-K-E-R. But uh, as soon as I looked that up, I was like, oh, wow, that's, I because I didn't know what those clamps are called or how you use them. And. Just finding the set of pliers, now I can use odor clear clamps everywhere. And I've looked, and there are many people who do build custom cars and race cars where all the hose clamps, every clamp is an odor clear clamp. There are no worm drive clamps. There are no T-bolt clamps. They're all odor clear clamps. Uh, they're really, really, apparently quite reliable. And so this is what a set of pliers, and it's just a simple set of pliers that really that isn't designed to cut. It's just designed to pinch in that special little area, and even has a little picture here. It's just designed to pinch that so you can get just the right, um, excuse me, not just get the right, just be able to successfully uh, seat those clamps. And how it works is you just put them on as tight as you can with the little dog teeth that they have, and then this plier just pinches in this little area and where it's spread out here when you pinch it it kind of has this little uh, you know top of a tree shape or mushroom shape and that just provides all the cinching that you need and then that little shape that you've made actually becomes a spring where it can expand and contract some and you really have a lot of success so anyway I wanted to make sure I uh, talked about these particular set of pliers because these are handy and of all of these crimpers and stuff Besides the common wire terminal ones, these were ones that I would feel uh, some subscribers may benefit from picking up. Um, because when you go to those Oedeker clamps, they're really uh, reliable. I know that they're used on diesel trucks and, you know, they'll last as long, you know, tens of thousands of miles, 100,000 miles even. Right to the point where their heavy-duty silicone hoses give out. Okay, anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.